Welcome back to The Real Story. My next guest has been in her current position since 2011. Prior to that, she spent 17 years as a state representative, including three as House Majority Leader. She is charged now with preserving, promoting, and protecting one of the most fundamental rights of our democracy, the right to vote. I want to welcome Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. I want to start with this. Um, very busy election season ahead of us, as you know. Your office is now hiring for the newly created position of election information security analyst. This is going to pay about $150,000 a year. Uh, so what will this person do and why do you feel it's so needed? We actually had this position uh, for the 2020 election we hired with federal funds. You know, it's no secret, the last couple of election cycles we've had a lot of issues with security. And Connecticut has done a lot to secure our elections. Uh, and we, But we found it very useful to inform voters of what was real and what wasn't real in terms of election management. You know, uh, there were a lot of sort of scare stories out there about what, what your ballot isn't being counted because uh, there are ballots spilled on the highway and we all know that those ballots are never going to reach wherever they're supposed to reach. There are all kinds of stories like that. But we need to know about that. And that goes back to 2020, what you just that mentioned, goes back right? To that was an actual thing that was oh, on yes. social media. Oh, yes. And so it's really important for us to make sure voters know that their vote is being counted. That that was it was panicking people. You know, they think oh, they hear all these stories. And so our job is really to make sure the voters understand what's going on. And that's why we're doing this. Uh, but there is sometimes a fine line between misinformation and free speech. House Minority Leader Vin Candelora said this um, person would just be a quote arbiter of meme content. And there are some petitions from citizens out there. I'm sure you're aware of those who call it a gross overreach of government. I mean, are they wrong? Yes, they're wrong. Okay. I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what we're trying to do. Our job is to inform voters how to vote, how the voting works, how the process works, and especially the last couple of years with COVID, there have been so many changes in the rules around absentee ballots and who can get one and where to put your ballot. We have new ballot boxes. A lot of information that we need to give voters, and that's why we do everything we do is all about the voters. To what extent, if any, have foreign governments played a role um, here in Connecticut in the election process, and can we really even stop them? Oh, we definitely had a hack, uh, an attempted hack of our election system first in, I guess it goes back to 2016, and it was a first for us, and we found out about it after the fact again, and um, since then we've, we've done a lot of changing of our systems to make sure they're more secure, but which, even which then, country was it? it was Russia. Russia, oh absolutely, and it's still going on, we know there are Russian bots that are sending out a lot of disinformation, speaking of which, and um, you know, so we have to keep working to make sure that our systems are secure. You know, remember, elections are fundamentally a local thing that happens in every town in the state. And so we had to make sure that people were changing their passwords. I mean, simple things, but they made a big difference in the way we're able to keep the elections secure. A different issue now. You recently issued an interpretation on a new state law that would expand access to absentee voting. Um, you basically say that the voters can now decide for themselves whether they're able to vote in person. Why do you think that's the right decision? Well, voters always are the ones that decide whether they're able to make it to the polls. You have to remember that's what this is all about. If they're feeling that they're unable to get to the polls because, for example, they are endangering someone's health, including their own health, then we uh, felt that the uh, new statute gave room for that interpretation that the voter must decide you know, it's in their hands, whether they feel they are unable to go in person to the polls. And COVID is still an issue for a lot of people. Do you worry about ballot spamming, though? I mean, I guess, uh, you know, anyone who thinks that this person's going to vote for them can send an absentee ballot application to anybody now. That was always true. We always have said, candidates have always sent applications to people. There's nothing wrong with sending someone an application, but you can't send in a fake ballot. Ballots we do not send out. Many states do actually but we do not we send applications but we that was the first time my office ever sent applications out we probably won't do it again it was very expensive <laughs> but we felt with covid people had to know that they had that opportunity to vote it's all about making sure everyone can vote and a lot of paperwork too and while we're talking yes. about paper is there any way to have total election security by the way and not have paper ballots i mean i know the way we do it is decentralized it's maybe harder to hack but it also feels a little outdated when you're going in there and you're still filling in that oval. 
I don't think in my lifetime we're going to change the paper ballot system. I think it still gives people the comfort that they're actually filling out their ballot. That may change in the future. Uh, right now, I'm still not comfortable with it. Um, we'll see. Another election issue that's often talked about is early voting. Um, and this year, Connecticut voters will see that question on their ballots. It's my understanding that about 39 states already have early voting in some sense. Um, what is it and why, uh, why has Connecticut been so far behind on this? Yeah, remember that number, 39 states are already doing this. Uh, what it means is you'd basically have more than just Tuesday in November to vote. You might have five days over which you can cast a ballot in person, uh, probably at town hall. And uh, we haven't had it because it is in our state constitution that we only vote on that Tuesday. It's very unusual. I think we're the only state left that has that in their state constitution. We would like to take it out of the state constitution and put it in statute and let the legislature decide how many days we want to have. But it really helps people be able to vote. It's interesting. All right, uh, another election concept that isn't quite as mainstream, but many states are still doing this, is to allow ranked choice voting or even being able to vote for more than one person in a ranked order. Your thoughts on that? Should Connecticut do that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we'd have to change, wholesale change to the way we do things, but I think it is an interesting idea. Uh, you know, people don't feel their vote counts. Well, they feel like, oh, I only have these two choices. I don't like either of these people. Right. And so it would. I think it would go a ways toward making them feel more included, but it would be a big change from what we're doing. And right now, I think the public is so uneasy already about elections. I would be, I'd be hard pressed to say I'd want to do it soon. Among the many intriguing races this election cycle will be your job. <laughs> and uh, the race for sec secretary of the state will have competitive primaries for both parties. Um, I guess at this point, are you interested in endorsing any candidate or at least telling us what advice you might have for the next person who sits in that chair? Advice for the next person? Yes. I think you have to focus on trust. I think the thing that has eroded over the 10 years that I've been in office, and more now, almost 12, uh, is that people no longer feel that their elections are safe and secure. And there are a lot of reasons for that, but I think that will be the coming issue for the next person. You interested in endorsing anybody yet? No. <laughs> Here in Connecticut, the Secretary of the State is um, considered a constitutional officer. It's right. an elected position. In some states, though, it's not that way. Um, it's an appointed position, and uh, that would seem to make it just a little more political. I mean, do you think that your position should always be one that's elected, or should it be appointed? I like the elected model. Most states do have elected secretaries. Some of them have different duties. Um, but I think, it, again, I think people need to know that that person is a person that somebody chose, that it isn't just the appointment of a political person putting a person in charge of that election, mostly because even the appointing authority is elected by someone. And so, I, I don't know. It's worked pretty well, I think, in Connecticut. Uh, I would keep it. What went into that retirement decision of yours? Why are you not running again? Again, and what are your plans for when you retire? Are you going to stay involved in government? Oh, I'm sure I will uh, on some level. You know, it's it's been a long road. I've been in elective office for 30 years in Connecticut. It's been incredible. It's been wonderful. I've enjoyed every minute of it, I have to say. But the, I think these are borrowed jobs. I don't think people should stay in them forever. I think you get, you know, you need some new ideas. I honestly think there needs to be a new generation coming into politics, coming into public service that will take us perhaps in a different direction. And I hope they're all out there eager to run for office. And it seems to be the case. Perfect segue into this next question. Your advice to those young people who are sitting at home, maybe watching this conversation, you know, seeing the current political climate that's out there, maybe intrigued about a career in public service, but wondering, is it really worth it? Is it, is it worth it? Absolutely. I think it is the most worthwhile thing I could have done with my life. And, you know, I hope that people realize the most worthwhile contribution you ever might make is probably in your local community. I still think those are very important jobs, and they are springboards to bigger jobs later, but, you know, remember that. Make a contribution. Get involved. Don't just sit there and complain about things, or even not complain. Get involved. Get civically engaged. It'll be a very worthwhile experience. And uh, Secretary, if I could just pin you down here, one accomplishment that you are the most proud of throughout your career, whether it's in your role as Secretary of the State oh, or as, as a legislator, and maybe one thing that you weren't able to get done that you, that you wish you had. Hmm. 
Well, I think, you know, on balance, there's, if I can only pick one, I would actually pick two. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> That's pick kind two. of cheating, but okay. um, UConn 2000, when we rebuilt higher education in the 1990s, I think that was a great moment in the state, and I think it's made a big difference. And the other thing, the other bill I'm very proud of is the one that uh, requires a course in civic education before you graduate from high school in Connecticut, every student. And I think that has made a real difference and will continue to make a difference, I hope. And the one thing that you wish you could have gotten done that you didn't. Wow. There's still time left, I mean. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually uh, probably would be the, the absentee ballot uh, question that may, I hope, be on the ballot in 2024. Uh, again, we're very much behind most other states that have some form of no fault, what we call no-fault absentee balloting, because I think the voters deserve every chance to vote that we can give them. Secretary of the State Denise Miro, we got to leave it there, but I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Nice to see you. You too. All right, and thank you for joining us on The Real Story. Remember, you can catch all our interviews in full on our website, fox61.com, or download our free Fox 61 News app. We'll see you back here next Sunday, 10 a.m. Have a great day.